So coming into your tabletop position, allowing your knees to stack directly underneath your hips, your wrists stack directly underneath your shoulders. From the top of the back of your neck all the way down to the tailbone, draw a lovely straight line in a way that we're not drip, uh, dropping down at the base spine and we're not looking forward, but also not rounding through the spine or looking down. Lovely straight line, press forwards and down with the fingertips. Press backwards and down with the shins. And when you're feeling ready, we're gonna come into some thoracic rotations. So we're starting off with the right hand drawing up towards the right temple. We then rotate open, rotate closed until the shoulders realign in height and then plant that hand down. These are a little bit harder than they look. We're thinking about lifting one arm, keeping the shoulders perfectly level, rotating open, pressing into the right set of fingertips, Squaring off the shoulders, planting the hand down. When you're ready, we lift, we rotate on the up breath, we come back through centre, and we plant that hand down. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, last one. Good job. From here, we're going to tuck toes and come up into a little downward stock. You can pedal through the feet if that feels right for you. And then we come all the way forwards and down onto our tummy. Brilliant. We're coming into our dart position here. So we're going to draw the arms like so. And this is option uh, number one for today. If we need to take it a little bit gentler, the hands come here. If we want to take it a little bit more intense, then the hands come here. So the dart is nice and simple. We exhale. And then we inhale. Option below that is a little bit less intense. You're not really pressing into the hands here. You could take them away, but you're just as tall throughout the back, just with a little bit of support. And then option three, we lift. Hands come all the way behind you. Hands draw all the way out in front and then all the way down. Nice and simple, we lift, we press the pelvis down in towards the ground, we lift the abdominals away from the ground, we try and aim for length as much as we can, keep the shoulders plugged into the ball and socket joint, think about being the rope in a tug of war from the feet all the way up towards the crown. Last one here. Well done. Before we trace a line back with the hands underneath the shoulders, inhale deeply, tuck the toes, and we're going to come into a tabletop. From here, we're just going into our opposite arm, opposite leg reach. So, once again, stack wrists under shoulders, knees underneath hips. And this time, we're going opposite arm, opposite leg, in opposing directions, and inhaling to come back. Nice and simple. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Now what we're working on here 
is the hips not sinking back. That's going to be more common than the hips going forwards. So we just want to stay a nice stacked tabletop. We're focusing on not dipping the hips to one side. Either way is quite common. It's quite common to externally rotate like so with that leg that's sending back. And it's also common to drop onto that side. So we're just focusing on keeping them as squared off as possible. You might imagine two car headlights shining down towards the floor. From here, we're gonna add on a little lift. We trace a line of weight and then we lift up into alignment with the body, lower back down, travel back. Trace a line of weight, keep your focus with those two car headlights on the two hips. We're thinking about not dipping through the lumbar spine here. So you can imagine a tray of drinks on the back. So when we lift, we're not thinking about drawing as tall as we can with the arm and leg. We're thinking about being as long as we can. With those feet, we can do a dorsiflexion as we draw up and a point as we draw back down. From here, we're gonna to begin to add in a crunch. So rather than tracing a line away then lifting, we're gonna go straight into our lift and then into a crunch. Straight into your lift and then arm and leg back down. Away from the body, into your crunch, away from the body, straight back down. If it feels more uh, if it feels a little bit easy for you, then you might add in a little crunch and a rounding of the spine instead. This will be harder on the balance if you come into this lifted position, then reach, then lower. Last one. Well done. Coming back down onto your tummy. We press the pelvis down. We're going to draw the arms directly out in front, unless we'd like to take a little bit of a gentler version, in, case, in which case we just focus on the legs and rest the forehead down. If not, arms come out in front. We're going to press the pelvis down. Exhale, lift opposite arm, opposite leg into you're swimming, lower down. Other side, and then lower. We're aiming for length. Inhale to lower, and exhale to lift. Really thinking about the body being as long as you can. Really lift the abdominals up and press the pelvis down. Good job. Well done. You can either stay here, taking this nice and slowly, or on the next one you can hold opposite arm, opposite leg, lower down halfway, and then pulse. Ten, nine, lifting up as tall as you can, key as long as you can, only lowering halfway, five to go. Other side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Good job. Hands come underneath your shoulders. Come back into your plank. And this time, drop your shins like so. We have two options here. One option is tricep push-up, also known as Pilates push-up. 
followed by a leg lift. Lower that leg, tricep press up, push up, leg lift on the other side. For the second option, your legs are a teeny weeny bit closer to start, but not quite a tabletop. You lift one leg, tricep press up, come up, leg comes down, other side lifts, tricep press up, come up, leg goes down. So whichever one seems more correct for you. Option two is exhale, inhale, lower the chest, exhale, press up, inhale, lower that leg, exhale, other leg, inhale, lower, exhale, lift, inhale, lower. We then have the other option, which is inhale, lower, exhale, press, inhale, lift, exhale, lower. The first option makes a little bit more sense breath-wise, but it is less challenging. So if you'd like to take that one for now, that's absolutely fine. If you're feeling strong after Christmas, then go for option two. We think about going as low as you feel comfortable to with the chest. We could go just above the ground, but we don't want to relax down onto the ground. So we have no weight pressing down. That's just going to make it feel that little bit easier when you come into your next tricep press up. We should feel it through the upper back of the arm. And we have two more here. Good job. Last one. Lovely. From here, we're gonna come onto one side. We square off the hips to shine them forwards. Inhale deeply. Your hips are perfectly stacked. Imagine those car headlights again. We want ourselves to be able to feel a nice gap between the obliques and the ground. Lift that top leg to hip height. And when you're feeling ready, we're drawing a circle. We draw forwards and up, and then we flex backwards and down. Point to lift, flex backwards and down. Good job. Lifting about the size of a dinner plate. <clears throat> Don't worry too much about the size, focus mostly on the precision. We think a little bit as well about that coordination. The pointing as you lift and the flexing as you lower. This will help not only recruit those smaller muscle fibres, but it will also target the glutes that little bit more as you go back and down at the back of your circle. We want to keep the elbow lifting upwards towards the sky. So we don't want it falling forwards or backwards. Same can be said for if the hand is on the floor. Last one, before we pause here, we flex the foot at hip height. We drive that leg forwards. We point and then we travel back. Nice and simple. The difficult part of this, exhale forwards, is when you are focusing on the upper body more than anything. So often the only thing we have to think about with the leg is keeping it at hip height and the speed in which we're moving. So we want to keep that speed as if you're moving through the consistency of custard. When we allow ourselves to picture that visualization, it will also help us um, recruit those small muscle fibers because we're really having to drive forwards, really engage through the correct areas to push forwards and to push backwards. Yet with the upper body, we've got to focus on not dropping here. We still want to be lifted through the obliques, not rounding the spine as we kick forwards and then extending the spine as we kick backwards. Last one. We also think about keeping that leg nice and level, 
not flicking it up at the back. Well done. Good. Take that leg forwards. Take a nice stretch through the side of the body. Inhale deeply. Good. From here, plant your elbow underneath your shoulder. Draw your top leg long. And we'd like to use a straight line here from your tailbone to the top of the back of the neck. Lift that top arm. Inhale deeply. Exhale, option one. You thread the needle under, come into a subtle rotation. Inhale, lift. Option two, you lift. Rotate under. And open. Exhale, rotate under. The weight of the body is on the shin, the forearm, and then you're just using that base leg for stability. If you'd like to take away that stability and challenge yourself more, float that leg. We don't need to rotate that far. You'll find that as we get to around here, that's enough to then inhale all the way back open even though you can go deeper. When you get to here, there is a lot more room to rotate all the way under, but we don't need to go as far as we physically can. It's all about using the breath. Your exhale will take you to around here and your inhale will guide you back up. Think about where we're engaging. Last one. Lovely, really nice. Other side when you're ready. Okay, resting your head down on your little bicep forearm pillow. Draw that base leg so that the sole of the foot aligns with the back. Draw that top leg long. Lift your obliques so that you're a straight line from the tailbone down or up <laughs> to the top of the back of the neck. We point and draw forwards and up, flex and draw backwards and down. We move slowly here. Keep your pelvic floor and core lifted and engaged. Good job. As you're moving here, allow yourself to focus on complete stability throughout the entirety of the body. The only movement is that circumduction of the hip and that pointing and flexing of the ankle. Again, you can visualize moving through that consistency of custard in this one. That just really helps us set the pace working through the muscles the whole time, going against that invisible resistance. Good job. The slower and the more controlled the movement, the more challenging. Last one. Before we hold that leg, hand can be on the floor or on the hip, whatever feels right for you. We then exhale, kick that leg forwards, point and travel backwards. We're trying to keep it around hip height. You can imagine that you're resting your ankle on a beach ball and you're just moving that beach ball all the way forwards. Point, dragging it all the way back. Really reaching that beach ball as far away as you can. So we're trying to really elongate that leg forwards and back. When we draw forwards, we're really getting that lovely stretch through the back of the calf and hamstring, which is enhanced by the dorsiflexion. As we draw backwards, we're getting that lovely strength through the back of the leg and stretch through the front of the leg as we draw it gently backwards. Last one. Good, take that leg over, quick stretch through the hip, through the glutes. Inhale deeply, breathing in. And then we 
when you're ready. Take that leg long, come up onto your forearm, like so. Lift your top arm towards the sky and exhale. Inhale, lift. Exhale, reach under. Inhale, lift. Now, where you look is completely up to you. You might follow that hand as it travels under. Look as it draws up. You might be looking forwards just to wherever your heart space is shining. Your top hip can be lifted like so. Or we can be lowered. Whatever feels right for your body. Don't feel like you need to do one um, or the same on both sides. If you had the hips lifted on the other and lowered on this or vice versa. Do what feels right for your body. Last one. Exhale. Inhale. Good. Well done. Drop that arm. Come onto your back. Okay. So from here, we're just going to wrap our arms around the waist. Inhale deeply. Exhale, find your imprint. So we flatten the spine to the ground. Press your abdominal muscles to the back and keep your arms wrapping around here. From here, see if you can lift your heels off the ground. If you can, without your abdominal muscles pushing up and without your lower back drawing away from the ground, then you're going to take option two, where your legs start in a tabletop. If your um, lower back did reach away or abdominals bulge up rather than engage backwards, then we're going to start in option one with the legs down. Wherever we are, lift your arms towards the sky. Option one, exhale, opposite arm, opposite leg in opposing directions. Point to your back. Option two, opposite arm, opposite leg in opposing directions. Point to your back. Nice and simple dead bugs. When you're ready, exhale, reach away. Point and draw it back. Flex and press the wall away. Good job. Point and draw it back. Lovely. Really nice. Focus on that imprint. Even though the hands aren't there anymore, we should be able to really have that mind-body connection for the imprint in every single movement. When we're on our, on our back, we focus on the double imprint. So that is the spine pressing down and the abs pressing back. And when we're in any other movement, it's just focusing on the abs pressing back. We also want to focus on that pelvic floor lift. So you can imagine that you're just holding a little blueberry in the pelvic floor and you're trying to hold it there without squishing it, but without letting it roll away either. So we have that engagement at all times. Good, last five. Last four. Really, really slowly moving. You can still imagine that consistency of cluster if that works for you. If not, then we imagine that we're pulling against the band as we draw back and pushing against the band as we draw forwards. Last one. Before we hug the legs in towards the body. Your abdominal should be a little bit woken up now. That one in particular allows us to target the abdominals. This one coming up here is going to really fire up through the abdominals. So we're going to click your heels together into a lovely V shape with the feet. Your legs themselves are in a diamond, so your knees are wide. When you're ready, hands come towards the temples, 
we exhale, lift your head, neck and chest. Option one, exhale, inhale, nice and simple. Option two, exhale, press away, inhale back, exhale, reach forwards, inhale back. And now you can do both of those with the head and neck down on option two. Once you draw back, you would just then lift and then lower back down. That's if you have sensitivity in the neck or um, are a little bit weaker and need to build up over time. When we're ready, we exhale, press the wall away. Really squeeze your thighs together here. Inhale, draw back. Exhale, reach forwards. Then back. Exhale, press the wall away. At this point here, we're really squeezing the thighs together. Inhale, draw back. Exhale, reach forwards. Good job. One, two, three, four. We move slowly. We allow that sequential control. When we press away, we're thinking about a little imprint. When we draw back, we're thinking about slowly and sequentially peeling off the ground and peeling back. Reaching forwards, reaching back. Good job. Last two. We're never pulling or tugging the head, it's always just a gentle resting near the temples. Last one. Well done and hug your legs in. Good job. So from here we're going to go into our next movement. We lift both legs towards the sky. We gently externally rotate from the hip joints so if your soles of your feet were shining forwards, they're just going to very subtly rotate, shine in towards one another a smidge. From here, we exhale, draw your right leg forwards and over your left, and then draw your right leg backwards and over your right. So we go one, two, and that is one rep. We cross over the other leg, and that's one rep. We're going to try and do this as quickly as we can. And the breath is going to be exhale, exhale, inhale, inhale. We're going to try and do it without hitting the legs against one another. When we're ready. And this is one where we can introduce a little bit more speed because we're focusing mostly here on control. One, two, three, four. Good job. Really focusing on reaching up towards the sky with those toes. Nice. This is your ballerina crisscross. It is a little bit easier said than done to not hit the legs against one another. It does require quite a bit of coordination and control. So don't worry if you need to just reset and take a moment at any point. Three, two, one. Good job. We leave the legs up there if we feel comfortable too. Although we can start this next one with a bent leg position instead. So option one is exhale, tap the leg down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, other side. Inhale, lift. Option two. Exhale, straight left. Leg drops down. Then lift. And other side. And then option three, you start with the legs in opposing directions. You lift your head, neck and chest. The hands come to the outer shin and the inner thigh. And you exhale, cross over halfway. You either do just singular movements, or you can do a double. <laughs> 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 
One thing to note here is you could take your hands away. You're not pulling your legs at all. They're just there for moral support, okay? When we're ready, whichever one you want to start on, find your start position and we start. Exhale away. Inhale in. If we're in this option one, we're really thinking about fixing the knee. Here, puppy on the toe. If we're in option two, we drop that leg and we can absolutely lift the head, neck and chest in this one to take that same leg movement, but just allow the legs to meet at this point here, just hop over, then drop, or we could have the head and neck down if we prefer. Option three, we're crossing over halfway. Take whatever feels right for you today. Really focus on length. Imagine that you're drawing a piece, drawing a line with a pen that's attached just between the toes and you're trying to reach as far away as you can because that piece of paper is just out of reach, meaning that we're drawing forwards and down rather than just down. Forwards and up rather than just up. Good job. Well done. Last two. Last one. Oh, good. So for this one, you can keep your legs in this position or you can lower them down. Your hands are gonna come wide and you're gonna be drawing a circle with the toes if you're in this position or the knees if you're in this position. We're drawing clockwise, then anti-clockwise. So we're going to be going round away, back to center, and in. We don't have too many of these. They are a little bit challenging. Round, way, back to centre. So if we're in this one, then we're drawing round, forwards, back to centre. If we're in our bent legs, like so. We're drawing clockwise and then anti-clockwise, rotating with every option. <coughs> If you do have any lower back issues, you can swap these out for open and closes instead, which will look like this. Open into a diamond, close in option two. Open into a V, flex the feet and close. So whatever feels right for you. If you do feel fine with the circumduction of the hip, and the gentle drawing of side to side within the lower back, then that's absolutely fine. We don't need many at all of these ones to get a really lovely workout. Last two. Good job. Last one. Lovely. So for this next one, we have very similar to the alternative, but with a leg drop. So arms can be down by the side. Option one is away, together, draw away, and then back. Option two is draw away, sorry, the feet are connected in this one. Draw away, then together, tap the toes down, then come back. And if tapping the toes all the way down to the ground is not quite right for you, then you don't have to. You can also lift the head, neck and chest, all of those options. Draw away, back together, tap down and lift. Only do that if it feels right for you. We absolutely can do it without the head, neck and chest lifted. So when you're ready, Option one, we draw the legs along, draw them away until you feel that lovely sensation of stretch through the legs. Flex, draw back together, point, draw away to an angle where you can keep your imprint and then travel back up nice and strong. Engage your quads to come back, point open, flex closed, 
Really engage every muscle in the legs here, especially the quads to come back. Just relying as much as you can on the muscles of the legs rather than the torso. In this one here, keep your imprint as well. Draw your knees wide, keep your toes clipped. Draw your knees together. Tap your toes to the floor, then draw back up. In this one, obviously, we're not thinking about relaxing down any weight into the ground. It's just a brushing of the floor and then a coming back up. Draw wide, draw together, draw lower and lift. Lovely. Last two. Really focus on that imprint. Last one. Good. Well done. So from here we have our bridges. Option one is we lift into a bridge. We lift one leg into a tabletop, we lower that leg, we lower the hips. Option two is the same two movements, but you do them in reverse. So you lift the leg into tabletop, you lift the hips into your bridge, you lower the hips out of your bridge, you lower the leg out of tabletop. So one, you're really focusing on that glute, when you're focusing more on stability. Okay, so we're gonna be alternating um, sides with every repetition. Arms are down by the side and the bridge is not that slow, lovely, sequential massaging bridge. It's much more of a pulse bridge. So you think about scooping the tailbone forwards and up. You then lift one leg into a tabletop, lower that leg into the tabletop, lower the hips. If you're in the other option, you lift one leg you lift both hips, keeping them squared off. You lower the hips and you dorsiflex to plant that foot back down. Always as we lift the leg, pointing, as we lift the hips, thinking about stability. And as we lower the leg, dorsiflexing, whether we're in option one or two. In the other one, we lift, we point to lift, flex to lower, hips lower. Okay, so do whatever one feels right for you. Lift, lift, lower, lower, or lift, lift, lower, lower. Either way, one's focusing a bit more on the glutes, the one where we lift the leg first, then come up into your bridge. We're going to be targeting the hips a lot there. Good job. Well done. Now this is a really lovely movement. We do want to focus on stability. So really keeping everything straight from the top of the back of the neck all the way to the tailbone, just looking directly up. Hips are forward facing, so they're shining up towards the sky, those two car headlights. We lift. We press, we lower, and we lower. We lift, press, lower, lower. Good job, last one. Lovely. From here, we're gonna go into our slow cycle crunch for our last movement, so we can give it everything we've got for today. The movement will either look like this, lift, crunch, come back through centre and lower, lift, crunch, come back through centre and lower or lift, send the leg away, come back through centre, lower. So you're going for that kind of 
ticking of the box. Your leg is going directly through the other one at the diagonal angle, back through centre and lower. Whichever one suits you more. We lift, crunch, and back through centre, lower. On the breath with this one, I often do inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. But you can do whatever suits you. Some might do exhale, exhale, inhale. I find the more we slow this one down, the more you're gonna feel it in the right places. The obliques, the abdominals. Really good job. Lovely. Keeping the elbows lovely and wide so that we're breathing deeply. We're aiming more with the armpit towards the knee than the elbow to knee. So we're not really thinking about touching elbow to knee as we're focusing on keeping that chest area really open, really wide. Last two, one on each side. Well done. Send your arms and legs long. Imagine that you are the rope in a tug of war being pulled from either end. And then step both arms and legs to one side of the room, stretching through the left side. And then other side when you're ready. back through centre, making your way up into a comfortable seated position. We take one hand into the opposite leg and open into a stretch. And other side. Through centre, we reach up and over. And other side. Well done, and you are all done. Good job, thank you, and Merry Christmas.